There are federal treaties that were created long ago that position very clearly that Indian nations and people of Indian descent or Native American descent should only be under the jurisdiction of the federal government or tribal courts. That has been ignored for decades and decades and decades until finally a case called Murphy came to the Tenth Circuit. At that point, the Tenth Circuit under Justice Gorsuch decided that this was no longer to be the case. And actually, Judge Gorsuch made a very clear communication that the Native American culture and Indians ha had been uh, repressed and taken advantage of, if you will, by the judicial systems in the state of Oklahoma for, as I say, decades and decades and decades. I'm an attorney in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and we're kind of ground zero for McGirt issues here. For those unfamiliar with what McGirt is, the Supreme Court came down with a ruling this past summer in 2020 that in essence said that the majority of Tulsa County, Okmulgee County, several other counties around are on an Indian reservation because that reservation belonging to the Muscogee Creek Nation was never disestablished by Congress. So therefore, we were still on Indian land. Well, when the Supreme Court made this ruling, they made a point of saying that you know, only 15% or so of the population are tribal members, even in Oklahoma. But what they failed to consider is, is these populations are all grouped within Northeast Oklahoma. In Okmulgee County, for example, they have probably, I guess, one of the highest per capita tribal member populations in the nation. Where we see a lot of the, I guess, pressure to f kind of figure this out comes from death penalty cases. So right now I have a client who is on death row and he is trying to establish McGirt. And that's, that's a lot of pressure for somebody whenever you think about it. Is the state going to put somebody to death potentially when they don't have the authority to do so? And what does that mean? And what does that look like? And how do we make that decision is is cumbersome. My name is Tracy Pretty. I'm a district court judge in District 14 in the state of Oklahoma. I sit on a criminal felony docket in my court. So how I ended up having um, most of the McGirt uh, cases was that when this decision came out, we all recognized that it was going to affect a lot of cases that were currently filed in Tulsa County and that it would potentially affect a lot of cases that had already been tried where convictions had already been obtained by the state and where people are already serving time on those convictions. Um, in an effort to try to streamline and make it less chaotic for our five criminal district courts here in Tulsa County, I volunteered to take those cases to try to keep them all on one docket so that attorneys were coming to one court, the state was uh, coming to one court and there hopefully would be uniformity of decisions handed out. We've had just in my court 961 filed cases come through this court on motions to dismiss and also post-conviction relief applications. We have disposed of 558 of those cases. So we still have quite a few cases pending waiting for a decision about the Cherokee Nation boundaries. It will be interesting, I think, to see uh, in the next couple of years what this looks like overall.